Hi everyone, I'm Takanori Fujiwara from UC Davis. Today I will be talking about interactive dimensional deduction for comparative analysis. Comparison of multiple groups is essential to understand any scientific and social phenomena. For example, comparison is necessary to understand a bacterial composition that makes your colon healthy or unhealthy. Or to understand opinion differences between different political party supporters. And as shown here, when analyzing high dimensional data, dimensionality deduction plays an important role in comparative analysis. In general, there are three existing dimensionality deduction approaches for comparative analysis. The first one is using general purpose dimensionality deduction methods, such as PCA. This type of dimensionality deduction preserves general information data. For example, data variance when using PCA. But because these methods are not specifically designed for group comparison, we might not be able to find any interesting group patterns as shown in this PCA result. The second approach is using discriminant analysis methods, such as linear discriminant analysis or LDA. This approach focuses on producing the maximum separation between each group. And unlike PCA, the LDA result shows a clear separation among groups. The last approach is using contrastive learning methods, such as contrastive PCA or CPCA. This approach focuses on finding salient factors in one group by comparing it with another group. For example, with CPCA, we can find an embedding space where a target group has much higher variance than background group. But these approaches have limited flexibility in comparative analysis. For example, we cannot identify embedding space where all groups have clear separation, but a specific group has higher variance than the others. In this work, we introduce a new interactive dimensionality deduction framework to support comparisons that can be performed with the existing approaches. We first introduce a new dimensionality deduction method called Unified Linear Comparative Analysis, or ULCA. ULCA unifies and enhances discriminant analysis and contrastive learning to provide more flexible analysis capability. ULCA provides a set of adjustable parameters to enable comparison from various aspects. Also, to aid parameter adjustment, the framework provides an algorithmic support. Lastly, to effectively use ULCA, we provide a visual interface, which can be used seamlessly with Python and the Jupyter Notebook. First, I will explain ULCA, which unifies LDA and CPCA. To introduce ULCA, because CPCA can be used only for two group comparison we first generalize CPCA for comparison of two or more groups. Then we design ULCA by integrating generalized CPCA and LDA. I will explain details for each step. The first step is generalization of CPCA. CPCA takes two feature matrices corresponding to target and background groups and computes a covariance matrix for each group to obtain variance information. Then, CPCA takes subtraction of these matrices with contrast parameter alpha. After that, by performing eigenvalue decomposition, we can obtain principal components with which only the target group has high variance. And this process can be written as this optimization problem. The optimization problem with CPCA can be generalized for multiple groups with this equation. Now we can assign multiple groups covariance matrices for each target and background with weights for each group. By using these weights, any groups can be target or background. Also, we can precisely control how much each group's variance influences on the principal components. 
The next step is integration of generalized CPCA and LDA. To maximally separate groups, LDA minimizes within group variance. At the same time, maximizes between group variance. This optimization can be written as this form. Generalized CPCA and LDA have a defined optimization problem. In generalized CPCA, we maximize the difference of variances, which is the trace difference maximization. On the other hand, LDA minimizes within group variance while maximizing between group variance. This optimization is trace ratio maximization. Because generalized CPCA and LDA have a different form of op optimization, it's difficult to unify them as they are. But we can slightly change the optimization problem. Generalized CPCA can be changed to the optimization of minimizing background variance and maximizing target variance at the same time. Now we have the trace ratio form. Similarly, we can relax LDA's optimization problem to the trace difference form. Now, general CPCA and LDA have these two forms. And as both methods have similar optimization problems, we can easily combine them now. For example, uh, this is a trace difference form of ULCA. You can see ULCA has the same terms with general CPCA. And to handle LDAs between group variance, ULCA has a new term into the generalized CPCA. Similarly, we can introduce the trace ratio version of ULCA. ULCA has multiple adjustable parameters to achieve flexible comparative analysis. ULCA can produce the same result with LDA and CPCA by using corresponding parameters as shown here. Furthermore, for example, ULCA can produce reasonable group separation and a higher variance for a certain group than the others. By adjusting parameters, ULCA can benefit from both discriminant analysis and contrastive learning. We also provide a visual interface and an algorithm to aid the parameter selection. I'd like to show the demonstration video, and for the details, please refer to our paper. We pre-process and apply ULCA to the data. Then, we visualize the result with the visual interface. The visual interface consists of three views. The left view shows the parameters used in ULCA. The middle depicts an embedding result with ULCA. And the right shows the original attributes contribution to each embedding axis. We can interactively adjust the parameters based on the analysis purpose. The embedding result is immediately updated with the new parameters. We can also refine the result by demonstrating how we want to change the embedding result. For example, to know which factors are similar to the orange and red groups, we move the orange group closer to the red group. Our algorithm automatically finds the best parameters to resemble the change and updates the embedding. Similarly, we can refine the scatterness of the orange group. Now, I will demonstrate our framework's unique capability using the MNIST handwritten this dataset. From this dataset, we compare digits 0, 6, and 9 and review their characteristics. We first perform pre processing to the data, then apply ULCA and show the result with the visual interface. Here, the initial parameters of ULCA are set to maximize the variances of digits 6 and 9 while minimizing the variance of digits 0. With this setting, we can identify various structures that people write for digits 6 and 9, but not for 0. But as you can see here, digit 9 has much higher variance than digit 6 in the result, and this indicates this embedding result mainly captures the information related to digit 9. To produce similar variances for both digit 6 and 9, we interactively reduce the related weight for digit 9. Now, both digit 6 and 9 have similar variances, 
and they are more scattered along x and y axis respectively. From here, we want to know which structure has high influence on the result. However, the default view is not suitable to see the axis information in the context of digit shapes. Thus, we use an existing library to visualize the axis information with heat maps. Here, pixels close to dark red and blue have strong influence on positive and negative directions of each axis, respectively. For example, we can expect points of digit 9 placed at the bottom in the embedding space are uh, written with the diagonal stroke. Similarly, we can expect these points in the red rectangle uh, written with a vertical stroke. From these heat maps, we can see ULCA captures variations of structures that people write for digits 6 and 9, but not for 0. But from the embedding result, we notice that digit 6 has many overlaps with digit 0 as a left side. We can expect this is caused by the fact that some of digit 0 partially use these highlighted pixels. To keep the current result, we visualize the same result in a different output cell. And adjust the parameters to find stro strokes that clearly differentiate 6 and 9 from 0, but are still written variously for 6 and 9. Now, digit 0 is clearly separated from digit 6. Similar to the previous example, we will visualize axis information with heat maps. We can see the x-axis information is clearly defined from the previous result. This result shows that the highlighted pixels tend to be used only when lighting this 6 or 9, but the amount of these pixels used for 6 or 9 differs by person. There are other evaluations in our paper, including analysis of political groups, where we perform identification and comparison of subgroups. Also, our performance evaluation shows ULCA is fast enough for interactive usage. Lastly, we provide comparison with ULCA and the existing linear dimensionality reduction methods. Finally, I'd like to conclude my talk. This work presents a new framework for comparative analysis, where ULCA plays a fundamental analysis role. The framework is suitable to find influential attributes of various group characteristics, or to find subgroups, or to process data for ensuring tasks. Also, we are interested in extending ULCA to non-linear dimensionality reduction. Lastly, the source code is available on GitHub. Thank you for listening.